In this video, we will solve the well-known algorithm called sieve of Eratosthenes. Wow, well, that's hard to pronounce, so from now on, I'll just call it sieve. All right, so anyway, the sieve is an algorithm for finding all prime numbers up to a given limit. So let's have a closer look how it works. Let's say we have numbers 1 through 100, and we want to find all prime numbers. The technique is very simple. First, we consider all numbers as prime. Then, we start performing the algorithm from the beginning. Now we know that the prime number is a whole number greater than 1, which has only two factors, factor 1 and itself. In another words, it is a number that cannot be divided by any other number except 1 and itself. So, back to our numbers. Since prime number must be greater than 1, we can ignore the first number and start the algorithm from number 2. So the way the algorithm works is that since the prime numbers can only be divisible by 1 and itself, we can simply eliminate all multiples of 2. Because if the number is a multiple of another number, then clearly that number cannot be a prime one. We find all the multiples of 2 and will mark them as non-prime numbers. So you can see that the algorithm looped through the numbers and found all the multiples of 2 and marked those as non-prime. Next, we move to the next unmarked number, which is 3. And once again, we loop through the numbers and find all multiples of 3. So now we have number 2 and number 3 still marked as prime numbers, along with several other numbers that we didn't check yet. So we move to the next unmarked number, we skip 4 because that is already marked as non-prime, and we'll go to 5 instead. And once again, we'll perform the loop and find all multiples of 5. And I'm sure you know what's next. The next unmarked number is 7, so we loop and find all multiples of 7. And at the end, we are left with an array of numbers, some marked as prime and the rest as not prime. So to put it into a code, we see that we need an array of boolean. Initially, we'll assume that all numbers are prime, so we mark them as true. And then, as we find non-prime numbers, we mark them as false. And at the end, we can display all the prime numbers that are marked true. So the first thing we need is an array that will hold the numbers. It'll be a Boolean array, and initially all numbers will be set to true. Because I am going to need access to this array throughout the program, I am going to declare it in a class level rather than within main method and keep passing it as an argument to the functions. So up here I will create a boolean array and I'll just call it all numbers. Next, we can ask the user to enter up to which number we need to go. We'll call that number n. n will capture that input from the user, but since it's an integer we'll convert it to an integer and assign it to a variable n. Now we can create the function that will initialize the array and sets all the numbers to be true. And it's going to be a very simple loop. So here's my function create array, and it gets the integer n, which is going to be the size of the array that we're going to initialize. That's the n that the user entered. Now the size of the array is not going to be just n though. We need to realize that the array obviously starts from index 0. So if the user entered, for example, 100, the indexes would be from 0 to 99. There would be 100 indexes, not up to an included 100. So what we need to do is to add plus 1 to our n, which is the size of the array. And I'm going to actually create a variable that holds that size. And like I said, we'll simply add plus 1 to it. So now, if the user enters 100, we'll go from 0 all the way and include it. 100. So there's going to be actually 101 indexes, but the latest number or the last number will be 100. And that's array size that we are going to pass into our create array. So I'm going to just call that function and I'm going to pass the array size to it. All right, so back in our function, we'll simply need a simple loop that will populate all the indexes with the true. Since it's a Boolean array, we want to set all of them to true. We already have our array, all numbers, but we need to initialize it to all numbers equals new boolean array of the size n. 
So now we have initialized uh, array, but still no values in it. So we'll simply do a for loop. We'll start from the index zero and we'll loop all the way to the n and i plus plus will iterate by one. And as we iterate, we will assign to each index of our all numbers to be true. Good, so now we have our initialized array and we can start finding the multiples. 